So I'm Johnny Crunch. And so I'm going to talk about uh, decentralized identifiers. We touched upon this a little bit yesterday. So I built a specification of the DID spec on top of IPFS, which I call IPID. Uh, this was born out of frustration um, using Project Indy in Hyperledger, uh, which is uh, d uh, code donated by the Sovereign Foundation uh, to, to Hyperledger. And uh, at a hackathon, I dug through the code, realizing what they're trying to accomplish was a uh, key value pair using distributed hash table. And I said, wait a minute, this looks familiar. This looks like IPFS. And so in a weekend, I hacked something together. So self-sovereign digital identities uh, came out of the reboot in the Web of Trust. Uh, it's a global identifier. It's a Basically, uh, an urn, a uh, uniform resource name, uh, like a UID with a namespace identifier. Um, so I built one similar. Here's the one that was shown yesterday, Sovereign, with a method-specific identifier and the method there being Sovereign. So I built one using I called IPID with a name-specific identifier. That is the hash of the pu um, public key that resolves to an IPNS namespace that actually resolves to either a JSON document stored in IPFS or now I'm actually storing an IPLD resource. So uh, let me give you, uh, so basically here's the, the uh, JSON that, uh, this is what we're working on with the DIF, the Decentralized Identity Foundation, and the W3C about what's this uh, JSON look like, what are they actually the, the, the structure of the JSON, uh, how to actually like create these attributes, um, the, uh, how, how you rotate the keys, uh, update the keys. So uh, this is still in flux. Um, a lot of it's coming out of the W3C work, but um, you know, basically IPFS DAG put, you guys know how to do this, and then you know, IBS, IPFS DAG resolve. And um, let me go here. Uh, so publish, in this case, I'm publishing it to an ED25519 uh, key. Thank you, Jeremy, for uh, supporting that. And uh, so you're basically pushing the IP, uh, IPLD uh, resource uh, to that, in this case, the EC uh, ED25519. Um, and then I built some Go code to resolve it. Um, and so it'll go actually fetch, and actually uh, thank you, uh, Kyle, for actually fixing uh, the resolution. Uh, this in ca case, I'm still using um, elliptic curve, so it actually takes still a little bit longer than um, in the DHT to actually to resolve it, um, but it should come back. In this case, uh, It'll come back actually with a signed uh, uh, QR code. Any second now. Come on. Come on, Kyle, don't, don't fail me. Oh, all right, I won't wait for it. Uh, so uh, let me go back to the presentation. So this is uh, like a, a specification through the, the Decentralized Identity Foundation. So other examples, including Sovereign, Verus One, Uport, Stack, uh, Fabian from uh, the Ethereum core team has actually created ERC-725. There is uh, IPID, and there's a couple of other who are coming along. Um, and also we're working on something called verifiable claims. Uh, verifiable claims are basically uh, uh, packets that actually have, have signed code from the elliptic curves, uh, uh, key signatures, uh, that basically has a, uh, a claim. So in this case, uh, the sort of hello world in healthcare um, uh, is for EHRs is vaccination registries. Uh, so I built a vaccination registry um, uh, using DIDs and uh, verifiable claims. Uh, and here is a proof of vaccination credential uh, who's issued by, you know, signed by uh, a particular key. Um, and in this case, the vaccination code is one, two, three. That's what this, the CDC's code for, for um, vaccination for flu shot. Um, and then I'm also building out like proofs. So if you um, want to timestamp it, anchor it into a blockchain, you actually can go to a, a smart contract and actually look up that this indeed was actually um, uh, signed and actually placed into as an anchor. So the big next steps are uh, finishing this work uh, and then creating service endpoints. So we talked a little bit about uh, did off. And so uh, this is separate than uh, resolving the DID to a document, uh, in, uh, in this case, IPLD. Uh, uh, this is actually the service endpoint. So if I want to communicate with a uh, U-port or uh, other 
DID specification, I need to have a service endpoint to actually to do um, Diffie-Hillman key exchange. I need to have some resource. I'm using, ideally, um, libp2p, so this is something I haven't built out yet, and I think it actually needs just more, some more work. I think what I would be a great thing to segue is to figure out the um, signing of uh, the, 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 the structure of, of IPLD, um, and maybe Hector, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, was that, you know, what do we sign? Do you actually sign the byte code? Do you actually sign the, the JSON? Uh, so actually we make sure we have a deterministic way of, of, of solving it. So I'll take that and I'll take questions. And I really would like feedback too, and this is, is this totally off course? Uh, I, I, I hacked this together just because out of threat of frustration that maybe this isn't the best approach. So I'd love some feedback. Crazy idea. I, I think it's just elegantly simple solution to, to this. And truly self-sovereign, because this is my issue is that like uh, Microsoft, Verus, or, or Sovereign, it's you're still you're trusting some third party or some intermediary. I really have this vision that I want to go back to the Tim Berners-Lee model, which is I have this node underneath my desk, and I'm just as valid of a, of a node on the internet, or in this case, identity, as anyone else. How would you um, allow for retrofitting with people who might not support the application? If you have an old world system that's trying to integrate with this, how would you think about making sure it actually works moving forward? So the way that works right now, the universal resolver, is it basically hits the, the gateway. So actually that's just one protocol, HTTP, that actually it works out of, it was just one line of code for um, our Marcus to implement in the resolver. So. Uh, People don't need to be running a whole IPFS node. It basically, they, you need a way of publishing it. And that's what the, how, how to wrap the code in a way that actually it could um, be uh, migrated towards older ways of doing it. So.